actually in the screen. Yep, right in the bullseye middle. And it's recording. I don't like it. Why? Because you're not smiling. Well, I'm not ready to shoot yet. <laughs> All right, so here is the Shrockworks differential armor plate. And this is in its bare state. This is just uh, plate steel. And I went ahead and cleaned it up with uh, some brake clean and a little bit of sandpaper just to, uh, well, of course, obviously to make sure that the paint adheres well. Uh, and, and also, of course, to um, to make sure that uh, I don't have any uh, inclusions or anything really bad uh, stuck in the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this several coats of Rust-Oleum Red. Because uh, as um, you all know that have been following the channel, I'm kind of going with red as, a, as an accent color on the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and lay some paint on this. And... Uh, We'll get around to um, the installation probably sometime this week. Um, it is Monday now. It took uh, about two and a half weeks for this to arrive. It was ordered, well actually, yeah, it was pretty close to three weeks. Yeah, it was ordered on uh, July the uh, 15th, and uh, today is July the 7th. So I will catch you all soon when we get ready for the install. Hi, honey. The roast's ready. <laughs> so here's my uh, Schrockworks armor plate and um, I did not get it powder coated uh, in the hope that it would arrive a little quicker. Uh, it did still take three weeks for shipping so um, their products seem to be uh, pretty well built but don't expect that you're going to get them quickly. Uh, I went ahead and put several coats of paint on here. Uh, the final coat I actually used um, the high temperature brake caliper paint uh, not because I really thought that this was going to be experiencing any super high temperatures like um, brake parts do but just because I like the idea of having the same uh, coloration and, and uh, tone of red between the brakes and the differential cover so this is basically a diff girdle and also uh, armor plate to protect uh, the rear sheet metal pan which on a Nissan axle is uh, very vulnerable um, to, uh, to impacts. My understanding is that uh, Toyotas are built a little differently and are more like a Ford type where the gear set comes out from the front and is a lot more uh, well protected the Dana Nissan design which is very very similar to what Jeeps are using loads the gears from the rear and just has a sheet metal pan and uh, because of that construction um, they're a lot more vulnerable to uh, rock impacts and uh, damage to that cover which could allow all of your gear lube to leak out which would definitely be a bad thing so here I've gone ahead and painted it um, like I said, I used the uh, the high temp paint just for the, the coloration, really. Uh, I went ahead and baked this at uh, 175 degrees for an hour to give it a nice durable finish. Um, I had looked up um, on several websites because I was thinking about this anyway, and one fellow was of the opinion that baking doesn't do anything at all and that the auto repair centers that advertise that they bake the vehicle afterwards are just scamming the consumers. I completely disagree with that and so did several other people who had written in that they had done uh, various projects in steel and aluminum both that they had baked the finish when they were uh, complete with uh, the fabrication and the test fitting and uh, found out uh, that it was much more durable. Uh, one guy had, had baked uh, four of his uh, steel car wheels and said that four years later they still looked brand new and his opinion was that it had definitely enhanced uh, the uh, molecular quality of the paint by doing so. Uh, so I'm certainly hoping that uh, this will ta take uh, trail rash and small rocks and things like that that are going to impact it during its life and that um, they'll be able to shrug that 
that damage off a lot better and uh, keep the uh, paint intact. Um, so that's it for this part of the video. Uh, part three, we will be moving over to the truck itself and I will detail actually uh, the installation and that will complete this project and will complete this video. So we'll see you in, well, in your time, it'll only be a few seconds uh, for us. It'll probably be at least this afternoon or possibly tomorrow. Catch you soon. All right, everyone, here we are back again. <laughs> back again means underneath the truck this time. So here is a standard Dana M226 Pro Forex electrically locking mechanical differential which uh, is not a limited slip but is a direct locking machine if you have looked up any of that on how these work these are a lot different than uh, a Eaton true track or anything like that a positive traction type differential this is a fully open diff and they provide traction with uh, two different mechanisms either using the brakes as a electronically controlled type of limited slip where you're actually taking and clamping the brake on the wheel which is losing traction uh, or when you flip the switch if you have a Pro 4 um, or you've installed one of these which you can on any of the other frontiers with a little bit of work and a little bit of wiring <coughs> you can uh, then actually physically lock 100% between the two tires with zero slip. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to put on that armor plate. So you can see here that I uh, took some simple green and uh, I cleaned up the diff cover a bit because it was looking pretty rugged, uh, as most things underneath the truck usually do. Uh, and while I was in here, I noticed that around the, the bottom edge, I see some RTV sealant has actually escaped around the edge a little bit. So I'm wondering if the dealer somewhere in the past might have resealed this diff cover. Because I know that from the factory, sometimes they do have a bit of seepage. But uh, Nissan's definition between leakage and seepage are two very big and different things. Leakage, they will warranty. Seepage, they don't consider a big deal. And they're like, either you live with it or you can fix it yourself, which really is not a big deal. As you can see, you take out 12 bolts, the cover pops off, you put some new RTV, you put everything back together. If you have a modicum of uh, mechanical talent, you can certainly pull off this little uh, repair on your own. So anyway, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and get started on pulling out the bolts and uh, getting the uh, armor, cover, whatever you'd like to call it, protection, uh, mounted up. See you in a few minutes. All right, everyone. So we got to the uh, the third and last portion of the install, and uh, I don't know if you can see here on the ground. There's a uh, a little bit of a puddle. The truck kind of peed on me. <laughs> um, I should have been smart enough to put something underneath of there, but the website says, oh no, don't worry about it. You take the bolts out and you can put the cover on without any trouble. Well, apparently sometimes you have trouble. So there are eight bolts that hold the cover in place, as you can see here. And uh, when I got to the bottom two, started to drip which of course uh, usually sets people into panic mode oh snap what do I do now so what I should have done had I been smart would have been to have had all of these bolts ready to go sitting right here fully assembled instead of over on the bench and I could have quickly threaded them in and I could have minimized my leak so unlike Discovery Channel and all those other guys that bleep out all of their their mess ups and uh, outtakes. I don't bleep. If I made a mistake, I'm going to tell you because hopefully you'll learn from it. So if you do decide to, to do one of these, um, definitely you want to put these two bolts in quickly 
first, then start working your way around the girdle and tighten in the same pattern, starting here with your hex key and working upwards up both sides so that you put an even stress across the girdle face and um, don't put any side forces into the cover which might be trouble later and as you can hear this thing is pretty solid like I showed everyone in the earlier video the, uh, the radiator skid plate that uh, one of the guys from uh, Club Frontier had, had very nicely um, supplied me basically uh, for free um, that is uh, I believe the same gauge steel as this and uh, so this is uh, quite a robust piece of equipment so um, given the other problems with that I had with uh, delivery etc etc it was uh, definitely overall worth it let me just make one note these are not the bolts that came with it these are grade 8 and these are hardened face ground flat washers I picked up all of this over at Lowe's they're nothing particularly insane um, they're uh, 5 16 18 uh, coarse thread uh, one inch long and then like I said these are just grade 8 flat face ground washers uh, the, the whole kit for all the bolts off the top of my head I think is probably another 15 or 18 dollars uh, the one the bolts that were supplied with the kit are regular hex bolts that you know everybody's familiar with uh, and I couldn't tell you exactly what grade they are. I think they might be five and So since this is something which is designed to take impacts you wouldn't want this to be able to take the hit and Have the bolts shear instead which would put you in just as bad a place and uh, You would lose all of your lubricant all over the ground. So learn from my adventure and uh, hopefully your install goes a little smoother like I said, have all your hardware laid out and go down to the store and pick it out before you get started and everything should go pretty well, especially if this is your daily driver and you have no backup vehicle. Uh, fortunately, I do have one, so if this did continue to leak, I would be able to go get parts if needed, but a lot of people, this is it. If your truck is laid up, then you are too. So there's the project in a nutshell and uh, hopefully that... Um, gives you a little push to, to want to go forward and do that yourself. Until next time, use her like a truck. Take her out and get her dirty.